guys, it's Steph Mary from the Lady Cool Cooking and School. Super excited for Super Bowl week. Um, we are here to show you a bunch of different fun Super Bowl treats that you can have. Um, and the recipe I'm going to show you right now is our Kansas City Chiefs Colors chocolate chip cookies. And so this takes everything great about chocolate chip cookies and we're actually going to turn the dough into the Kansas City Chiefs Colors to help them and root them out and celebrate. Now, whether you are rooting for the Chiefs this year or you're rooting for the Buccaneers, um, these are still a very delicious cookie to share on game day. Um, and Super Bowl in general is just like, just like the most amazing thing. I remember when I was a little kid getting very, very excited about the Super Bowl, even before I knew about what team that we were cheering for, just with all of the excitement and the hype of the big game and all of the food and getting the family together to sit down and watch the commercials and eat and celebrate together and tease each other about the football game. And so um, I just can't wait to share all of this fun ideas that we have with you today for our Super Bowl kit. So let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about our ingredients for these cookies. And so I've got everything here laid out that I need to make our Kansas City Chiefs red and yellow theme colored cookies. Um, and so I've got our butter, our sugar and egg, some flour, some baking powder, some salt, and then I've also got some chocolate chips and some food coloring. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the dough and then we're gonna bake the dough off, but first we're gonna mix it up into some fun little colors. All right, so when you're making cookies, you always gotta kind of remember there are two best friends in cookies and that is butter and sugar. So I'm gonna add my one stick of butter into my large mixing bowl. This is softened butter, not melted butter. It just means that the butter has been sitting out at room temperature, so it's really easy for me to smush into this bowl here. And then butter's best friend is sugar. So we're gonna take and I'm gonna add um, not just our white sugar, but also our quarter cup of brown sugar. So I have a half a cup of regular granulated sugar and a quarter cup of brown sugar in there. And what the brown sugar does for cookies, it gives, it gives you that cookie like ah moment when they come out of the oven because brown sugar has molasses in it and molasses helps make things a little gooey. And then the regular sugar, I mean, it's a cookie. So the sugar helps make it sweet. It also helps kind of set the structure of the cookie. And so what I'm doing now is something called creamy, and that's where you take butter and sugar and you smush it together until you really can't like tell where the butter ends and the sugar begins. And when you add brown sugar, it almost looks like wet beach sand as far as the texture goes. And so we really wanna make sure that we are smushing this all up. And a lot of recipes it says, smush it until it is light and fluffy. I don't know if butter can really be fluffy, but it definitely is gonna take on that characteristic of wet sand and you don't want it to be smushed into like a ball of dough quite yet. So I think that that's kind of what they mean by fluffy is they don't want you to mix it and just turn it into a giant ball of sugar in the middle. All right, so I've got my dough, well, I should say my sugar, my butter, ready to go. It's all in the bowl. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some liquids into here. And so we're gonna add our egg. So I've got one egg that I'm gonna crack right on the side of the egg there open it up in a little bowl and make sure there are no shells. And then I'm gonna dump that right into our big mixing bowl. I'm also gonna add our vanilla in at this point and get that stirred up. It's kind of the wet stage of cookies um, because we're gonna have all of our wet stuff in there. And so it doesn't look really like the greatest. This is not the prettiest stage of cookies, but we really do need that egg because the egg adds the protein and it kind of acts like a glue and kind of holds all of our other yummy ingredients together. So we really wanna make sure that we get that egg incorporated really well into our mixture here. The other thing that we're gonna add at this point is before we add our flour is our baking soda. So baking soda is gonna be our leveler, leveler in this recipe. And so it doesn't make things level. It's a leavening agent. And that means it makes things go poof when they're in the oven or it should help the egg keep it all poofy when it's in the oven. And we, we want that. We want our cookies to have a little bit of lift a little bit of lift on there. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I've got my baking soda right here ready to go, and we're gonna measure out one teaspoon. So anytime that you're measuring out things like baking powder or baking soda, it's important to remember that you can't just scoop it all willy-nilly. It really is a science. And so I'm gonna take, and I'm actually gonna use the lid of my baking soda box to level it off so it's really, really nice and level. And then the second thing I wanted to show you is with baking soda, don't just dump it into one spot. I kind of just take and tap it on my finger so it goes evenly and incorporates all over the dough so I don't just get one cookie with baking and soda. So that's kind of a fun tip for measuring. All right, we're gonna stir that in really quick. 
Make sure there's no big butter chunks still. This is a really good time. If you see any big butter chunks, now is the time to smush them into your dough mixture because we don't want the butter just melt in the oven, okay? Now, we've got our baking soda in there. We're also gonna do the same thing with the salt. I'm gonna just sprinkle the salt all over the top of that. And that was just like, like a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So we're just gonna take and scrape that in there. And the salt, well, it helps, it helps a lot of the stuff work in there, but really what it does too is that just like a little tiny bit of salt balances out all of this chocolate we're gonna put in there and all the sugar that's in that cookie. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna sprinkle on our flour a little bit at a time and get that mixed in. So the flour that we're gonna use in this recipe is we're gonna use one and a third cups of flour. And so I added the third cup first, and I'm gonna get that really, really well mixed in here. And then we're gonna add the whole cup of flour. So we're gonna take and we're gonna add that in real quick. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna stir that up. This is where I usually get a little bit messy because the flour wants to go all over the place. You of course can do this in a mixing bowl too, like with a mixer, um, a hand mixer up to this point would totally work. Um, or if you have a countertop kitchen egg mixer, that works out really, really well too. Okay, now here's my trick. When I get to about this stage, it's not, it doesn't look like cookie dough yet, okay? But when I get to about this stage, this is where I'm gonna intake and I'm gonna incorporate in my chocolate chips, but not all my chocolate chips. Because I like to save a handful of chocolate chips. And I'm gonna save those, and those are gonna be like my fancy chips that are gonna go on top of the cookie. Okay, those are the ones that you kind of like just, you always see the pretty pictures of chocolate chip cookies. This is how they do it, folks. They save some chocolate chip cookies and they pop them into the tops of the cookies. The rest of these cookies, I'm gonna take and we're just gonna dump those right into the batter, our cookie dough. And I kind of loosely get them to kind of go evenly all over the dough. And then I'm gonna take and I'm gonna start really getting in there and really smush it. And that's why I like this really heavy duty, big, spoonchula spatula here. At this stage at your house too, this is, you can break out your hands and get in there, make sure they're clean, um, but you can do that. All right, and so when I say I want it to look like cookie dough, I want it to be like, not sticky, but soft enough that I can smush it and it'll like stay. It'll be its, it's little cookie self. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use my hands and I'm gonna knead this together and I'm gonna get it to kind of form a log shape. And the reason I like to use that log shape is for me, that is the easiest way to divide this into three even pieces. And we want it in three even pieces because I'm gonna turn a third of it red and a third of it yellow. And then I'm gonna keep a third of it just cookie color. And that's gonna help those colors pop when we combine the cookies together. All right, so I'm smushing that up. There we go. I've got it kind of in a log shape on the counter and I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna roll it just like that. And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eyeball it as they say. I'm just gonna kind of estimate a third because they don't have to be exactly a third as far as the colors, okay? So I've got three little bowls here ready to go. And this is just to kind of help me put, put them places. So I'm gonna go, okay, that's gonna be that color, that's gonna be that color. And then the first color I'm gonna work on is the yellow. So I'm using a concentrated yellow gel of food coloring and like they say a dab will do yeah a little bit goes a long way i probably put out an eighth of a teaspoon of that red food coloring and i'm just going to take and i'm going to start kneading it into this dough now if my counter gets a little bit sticky i don't want the dough to start just breaking apart all over my counter i'm going to grab a little bit of extra flour here and i'm just going to put that right on the counter so as i'm kneading the color into it the dough is not sticking to the counter Although I don't want to add too much flour because if you add too much flour, the dough won't actually stick to the other colors of dough either. So we're going to make sure that that all comes together. All right. So it's definitely turning yellow. So this is good. And my hands are kind of turning yellow too. In between the colors, you are probably going to want to wash your hands really, really thoroughly or sidestep the yellow fingers all together and just grab a pair of gloves, like some plastic rubber gloves if you got them, some kitchen gloves. Not the ones you clean with, but just like a clean disposable pair of gloves will help you do that. Otherwise, you do really wanna make sure that you wash your hands right away. So I have a nice, bright yellow dough. Oh, it's really bright too, okay? Now, put that into the yellow bowl. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and this is also why I started with the lighter of the two colors, 
because now I'm going to do my red dough and I'm going to do the same technique, but because red is a darker color, I didn't want to get the red into the yellow dough or the plain, the plain cookie dough. This is a really great cookie dough too. I would, you know, definitely say keep this recipe on hand and you could turn this into all sorts of sports teams colors for cookies and fun ways to do this or just have delicious chocolate chip cookies anytime that you wanted to. You of course don't have to turn cookies fun colors, but it is really kind of fun for the Super Bowl. Like, I just can't get over how much fun I have cooking for my friends and family at the Super Bowl and getting all together and watching it. The Super Bowl is the second biggest food holiday in the United States. It comes in second only to Thanksgiving for the amount of food that takes place, which is just crazy to me. Okay, now let's put these cookies together. So we've got all of these different fun colors that we're gonna kind of blob together and turn into these cookies. And so I'm gonna take, and we're gonna take, and I'm gonna wash my hands, and I'm gonna kind of clean up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to turn them into the multicolored different cookies when we get back. Okay, you guys, everybody, our cookies are out of the oven. Oh my goodness, they look so good. They smell so amazing. Um, we've got the full on cool Kansas City Chiefs colors going on in our cookies to celebrate for the Super Bowl. Um, what I am, I've got a really, really hot pan here, so I'm still using my oven mitt. What I wanted to tell you guys is with cookies, that the cookies do something called carryover baking. And so I pulled these out of the oven at about 11 minutes. And so that timing that eight to 10 and my oven took about 11 minutes because what I was looking for is the other telltale sign that cookies are finished. And that's that they started to just kind of crack on the top a little bit, and they were getting that golden brown edge around the edges. Everybody's oven is a little bit different. And so in addition to like the time-wise, that eight to 10 minutes, you really do wanna watch for those other signs that the cookies are done. And then they're gonna carry over bake a little bit on this cookie sheet too. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna allow them to be on this cookie sheet for about two minutes. Um, which is probably about the time that they've been on the oven. And I'll show you the next trick that I do. If you have a piece of parchment paper underneath of them, very carefully, this is something to do with definitely an oven mitt, is I just catch the corner of my paper here, and I'm gonna take and lift the paper, and this is something you might need a buddy for in the kitchen. And we're gonna take, and we're just gonna slide those cookies right off the sheet. Um, it's good for two minutes for that carryover baking, because what it's gonna allow, is gonna kinda let the cookies to settle a little bit and get that golden brown bottom to them, but you don't want them to actually overcook on your cookie sheet either. All right, so now the moment of truth. They're hot, but I'm gonna do this quick. Um, remember that goo factor I talked about? So this is the ah moment, where you take your cookie with the brown sugar and you just, oh yeah. You get that good little soft cookie bin to it. Mmm. Mmm. It's a little warm. But it's super, super delicious. Go Kansas City Chiefs. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if all the players on the team would like these, but I'm pretty sure Andy Reid would love them. And so these are going to be super, super delicious. Other items in our kit, we've got some Buccaneer Bites, um, where we're going to make some delicious pretzel bites and some, um, and with a little salt on top. It's going to be really, really kind of cool. We also have football calzone pizza, pizza pockets, and I cannot wait to show you guys how to make our yard line dipped Oreo little pops. So cute. All right, all of that coming up with our Super Bowl kit. <clears throat> I'm gonna take and wrap some of these cookies up so I make sure that I don't eat them all before the Super Bowl on Sunday.